The optical properties of a material can tell us important information about its physical properties, such as thickness. However, they can also reveal valuable information about the properties of a material through the use of spectroscopy. So in this video, I'll be discussing the SAM EDX or scanning electron microscope with energy dispersive X-ray analysis and the AFM or the atomic force microscopy. From searching for food contaminants to identifying machine malfunctions to predicting how an aircraft part will corrode over time, EDS or energy dispersive X-ray analysis is a widely employed technique by today's material scientists. And used together with the scanning electron microscope or SEM, an EDX detector can generate more information about a sample than an SEM can alone. Using EDX, researchers can quickly generate information about the chemical composition of a sample including what elements are present as well as their distribution and concentration. But how exactly does EDX work? With an SEM, a variety of signals offer up different information about a given sample. For example, backscattered electrons produce images with contrast that carry information about the differences in the atomic number, while secondary electrons produce topographic information about the sample. Yet, when SEM is joined with an EDX detector, X-rays can also be used as a signal to produce chemical information. And to understand how these X-rays are generated, it is important to consider that every atom has a unique number of electrons that reside in specific energy levels. Under normal conditions, these positions belong to certain shells which have different discrete energies. The way EDX analysis works is that the electron beam hits the inner shell of an atom, knocking off an electron from the shell, while leaving a positively charged electron hole. When the electron is displaced, it attracts another electron from an outer shell to fill the vacancy. As the electron moves from the outer high energy level to the inner lower energy shell of the atom, this energy difference can release in the form of an X-ray. The energy of this X-ray is unique to the specific element in transition. X-rays emitted through the process are collected by a silicon drift detector which measures the signal and interprets it using software. In essence, the chemical information can be visualized in several ways including elemental mapping and line scans. In this way, X-rays can be used to identify each element that exists in a sample. Interestingly, EDX can be used for both qualitative and quantitative analysis, enabling users to identify both the type of elements that are present as well as the percentage of its elements concentration within the sample. And as with traditional SEM, the technique requires little to no sample preparation and is non-destructive, meaning that it doesn't damage the sample. Because of its many advantages, EDX analysis has become a common practice across industries ranging from manufacturing or research to energy and resource management to consumer packaged goods. In fact, it's so practical that it's now an essential part of owning an SEM. Using an SEM to perform EDX analysis, Researchers can improve production quality while saving valuable time on using a very simple experiment. Now let's move on to another equipment in microscopy called the Atomic Force Microscope or AFM. An atomic force microscope is a type of high resolution scanning probe microscope that has a resolution that you can measure in fractions of a nanometer. It was pioneered in 1986 by Nobel Prize winner Gerd Binnick and along with Calvin Quaid and Christoph Gerber. Atomic force microscopy is arguably the most versatile and powerful microscopy technology for studying samples at nanoscale. It is versatile because an atomic force microscope can not only image in three-dimensional topography, but it can also provide us a various type of surface measurements to the needs of the scientists and the engineers. It is powerful because an AFM can generate images atomic resolution with extreme scale resolution height information with minimum sample preparation. So how does an AFM work? So again, how does an AFM work? So the AFM principle, so number one is surface sensing, 
An AFM uses a cantilever with a very sharp tip to scan over a sample surface. And as the tip approaches the surface, the close range, attractive force between the surface and the tip causes the cantilever to deflect towards the surface. However, as the cantilever is brought even closer to the, to the surface, such that the tip contacts it, increasingly repulsive force takes over and causes the cantilever to deflect away from the surface. Number two is detection method. So, a laser beam is used to detect cantilever deflections towards or away from the surface. So, by reflecting an incident beam off the flat top of the cantilever, any cantilever deflection will cause slight changes in the direction of the reflected beam. So, a position-sensitive photodiode or PSPD can be used to track these changes. Thus, if an AFM passes over a raised surface feature, the resulting cantilever deflection and the subsequent change in direction of the reflected beam is recorded by the PSPD. Third principle is imaging. So an AFM images the topography of a sample surface by scanning the cantilever over a region of interest. The raised and lowered features on the sample surface influence the deflection of the cantilever, which is monitored by the PSPD. So by using a feedback loop, to control the height of the tip over the surface, this meaning maintaining constant position, so the AFM can generate an accurate topographic map of the surface feature. So for the advantages of AFM, so AFM is a powerful tool that is invaluable if you want to measure incredibly small samples with a great degree of accuracy. Unlike rival technologies, it does not require either a vacuum or the sample to undergo treatment that might damage it. At the limits of operation, however, researchers have demonstrated atomic resolution in high vacuum and even in liquid environments. So in comparison with the SEM, EFM provides extraordinary topographic contrasts, direct height measurements, and an obscure use of surface features and also no conductive coating is necessary for samples so that's for the AFM so however one of the major downsides is the single scan image size which is of the order of 150 by 150 micrometers compared with the millimeters for a scanning electron microscope and another disadvantage is the relatively slow relatively slow scan time which can lead to the thermal drift on the sample.